Hello, uh, welcome to this uh, fifth in my series of introductory talks on uh, uh, the ideas of Marx and Marxism. Today I'm going to talk about the revolutionary role of the working class, uh, which was a key idea of Marx's. Now, Marx and Marxists are champions of the working class, first and foremost. Uh, and this is true in practice and in theory. They support workers' strikes against uh, bosses. Um, they uh, defend working class interests across the board in society. They're part of the working class movement and they fight for workers' power, for the working class to take over political power um, in society. And the theory of the revolutionary role of the working class is absolutely central to the whole uh, uh, of Marx's thought. There's an interesting biographical point here uh, in that um, it would appear, if you look, when you look at it on the surface, that the uh, revolutionary role of the working class, it would be a consequence, a conclusion drawn from Marx's theory of history or his critique of capitalist political economy and the contradictions of capitalism and so on. And indeed, in a way, it is that. But actually, Marx discovered uh, the working class before he developed those theories. It was actually an encounter with communist workers in Paris in 1843, where Marx was only 25, that led Marx to grasp the potential of, of the working class uh, as the agent of change and creators of a new society. And grasping that was the foundation for the development of his new theory of history and all the rest of his, uh, uh, of his, of his um, theories. Um, and the rest of the theories that he spent his lifetime working on were actually meant to serve as a guide to action in the struggle for the liberation of, of, of the working class. Now, why then did Marx settle on the working class, as it were, as the agent of social change? Uh, what was the basis of his lifelong commitment to working class struggle? Well, it was not just the suffering and the poverty and the exploitation of the working class. Uh, or, to be more precise, it was not only those things. The fact that workers... Uh, suffer and uh, are exploited under the system, uh, of course, gives them a motive and an interest in fighting against the system. Uh, and uh, Marx was well aware of this. But the, it's also true that, for example, that slaves and peasants have suffered, been oppressed and been exploited for millennia. But Marx wrote, workers of the world unite, not peasants of the world unite. Uh, why? It was because, first of all, of the, work, the power of the working class, and secondly, because of its ability, as he saw it, to create a new uh, society. Now, um, the working class is the unique child of capitalism. As capitalism expands, so does the working class. And we see that in the world today. Uh, capitalism can defeat the working class in battle after battle, break its strikes, smash its unions, curtail its liberty through dictatorship or whatever. But it cannot do without the working class because it needs workers to produce its profits. And so the working class always has the potential to return to fight again then capitalism draws workers together in large workplaces, links them in national and global industries, concentrates them in vast cities. Again, just look at the world today, it's never been so true. And this gives the working class massive potential political power. Right? Without the work of workers, no train moves, no bus moves, no lorry transports goods, no minerals uh, uh, leave the earth, no papers are printed, no TV station broadcast, no school or bank opens. 
Even the armed forces of the capitalist state depend on workers in their ranks. In creating the working class, capitalism creates the most powerful potential the, or potentially powerful oppressed class in history. Uh, they have the power to paralyse the economy. They have control. They have the power to take over control of the society. Then there is the fact that the struggle of the working class is, by its nature, a collective struggle. To take on the mill owners of the 19th century, or Toyota and Google today, Workers have to combine their efforts and act together. They have to combine their efforts and act together nationally in order to take on their governments and so on. And also to take possession of Toyota or Google. Uh, the workers cannot divide the company up um, into small units, as peasants can do with the land, for, uh, for example, but they have to turn it into social property. Um, it has to be nationalised, socialised. They have to do it together. And this is this collective nature of their struggle and the collective nature of their power. This is what makes uh, uh, the working class uh, a, a socialist class. It's not that all workers are automatically socialist in their heads. It's that the logic of working class struggle always points in a collective direction. Um, moreover, when the working class takes power, uh, achieves political power, it still remains the producing class in society, with no class be below it uh, which it can exploit or live off. Again, this is different from when other classes such as the bourgeoisie took power. The bourgeoisie could become a ruling class with working class beneath it to exploit it. Whatever the talk about liberty equality, uh, fraternity and so on. But this is not true for the working class. Plus, being concentrated in big workplaces and big cities at the centre of economic and political power gives the working class the capacity to prevent any new class emerging above it, to keep its leaders accountable to it uh, uh, and to continue to pr both produce and exercise power uh, uh, in society at the same time. And in that way, it lays the foundations for the building of uh, a genuinely classless society. And in liberating itself, therefore, the working class lays the foundations for liberating humanity as a whole. It's not, of course, that with the workers' revolution racism, sexism, homophobia, other forms of bigotry and oppression will disappear overnight. Not at all. They'll have to be consciously fought against. But working class power uh, can lead in the direction of a classless society in which the material foundation for eliminating all those age-old prejudices, bigotries, divisions, oppressions can be, uh, can be overcome in a way that is not possible under capitalism. Um, this, the revolutionary role of the working class, is the core uh, of Marxism. All Marxist philosophy, history, economics and politics starts from here. Um, now, it's interesting that no proposition uh, uh, in Marx has been so roundly dismissed by academics and pundits, um, including often those who would claim to be sympathetic to Marxism. They often think they like Marx is what Marx might have to say about economics, but not the revolutionary role of the working class and so on. The working class has changed, is their familiar cry. Used to be, maybe. Used to be uh, that it was revolutionary, but not anymore. Well, yes, the working class has changed. It's changed in its jobs, its clothes, its pay, its nationalities and its culture uh, and so on. But in its fundamental conditions of existence, it remains. It's still the child of capitalism still living by the sale of its labour power, still exploited and still struggling collectively. And at the same time, its size and potential power has grown enormously. In Marx's day, the uh, proletariat was more or less confined to Western Europe. Today, it stretches across and fights on all five continents, from Sao Paulo to Seoul. And there... Uh, therein lies the basis of socialism and the 
future of humanity. Now, it has to be said, none of this happens automatically. Uh, to fulfil uh, its revolutionary role, the working class must become conscious and organised. Uh, in terms of consciousness, the most important thing is mass in developing socialist consciousness in the working class is mass struggle. Propaganda, like this video, can play a role and is useful, uh, but to reach the masses, propaganda uh, uh, has to be combined with the masses themselves engaged in uh, collective struggle where they get a sense of their power and their confidence rises. In terms of organisation, trade unions are important, but they're limited by and large to fighting for improved conditions under the system. Uh, experience has shown of 150 years of working class struggle that in addition to trade unions, workers also need their own political party, their own revolutionary party. I have to talk more about this later, but that, that also plays a crucial role in enabling the working class to actually take, take power. And I'll come back to those points. But to say the, the struggle of the working class a working class revolution, that above all is what Marxism is about. Thank you.